Hello friends, I am Ardhan Dode and you are watching Edith English Literature. In this video lecture, we are going to analyze human relationships in E.M. Foster's A Passage to India, which is a beautiful gateway into the heart of India. The concept of India and how the Western people has realized the realization of Indianness is the very subject matter of E.M. Foster's beautiful novel, A Passage to India. Now, E.M. Foster is such an English novelist who wrote in a style notable for its consciousness and fluidity, exploring the attitude that create barriers between people. In fact, there are so many currents and cross currents of themes in E.M. Foster's A Passage to India, such as cultural class, study of human relations or friendship, public versus private relationship, uh, the ambiguity, God and religion and obviously the heart of Indianness. Among them, human relationships are obviously most interesting and we are focusing our lecture on that particular topic. A Passage to India is a masterpiece. It relates a specific aspect of life in British India in the early 20th century. As a student, you have different aspects for study here. The British colonial administration, the legal system, the Hindu caste system, the native states and the relationship uh, with that of British India, Hindu-Muslim relationship, and the every life of British families residing in India in 1920s. So out of these themes, uh, we can have a better understanding of human relationships that are being interpreted in uh, bisecting all these topics and subtopics. Now here we are going to study if is the human relationship here stated uh, is restricted to a page of history or not or so what is the time frame what we can uh, not access foster's time unless we get deeper into the story foster first visited india in uh, 1912 and critics have agreed that time setting is an amalgamation of the early 1910s and 1920s even that time can be expanded to read colonial history or the greater value of Indian civilization. A passage to India which was published in 1924 uh, in which uh, uh, the time frame in which we can find out that it deals with the conflict of the cultures in terms of the ambiguous personal relationship between an English visitor and an in, a Indian uh, during the British rule. Before we go into analysis, it is better to note a few uh, structural evidence or structure from the novel. A passage to India, which is in fact a passage to the heart of India. As the title word from Walt Whitman's Passage to India in Leaves of Grass suggests, has three parts or sections. The story revolves around four characters. Dr. Ajij, the, his, his, his British friend, Mr. Cyril Fielding, who is somewhat a mouthpiece of Foster, Mrs. Moore, and Miss Adela Quested. It simply unveils a reality of British Raj in India. Through symbols, through correspondence, through associations, all the parts, the three parts, are alive and stating an alter reality. Each section is set in a different season and goes on to describe a particular aspect of Indian uh, lifestyle. Or, in fact, the very India has been depicted in three parts. 
part one is titled mosque which takes place during the cool dry season it is the mosque where dr aziz meets mrs moore and this particular section corresponds to islam and islamic aspects of india though there are some hints that uh, there is a possible trouble boiling up and the prevailing mood is harmony here the highlighting parts of this section is the uh, ajiz meeting with mrs moore and mr fielding's tea party that that the uh, two major incidents that surrounds this part one the part two is caps it is the hot season and stands for misunderstanding and conflict that we find in the novel adela quested became the central attention here it has two main dramatic actions the incident that happens in marabar caps and the trial of dr aziz uh, interestingly in the first case Mrs. Moore gives in to despair after she hears a kind of echo while she was in the cave and Adela become completely confused of all this situation. The prime incident of this section is British dominion or domination of India and a contemporary British Christian perspective of seeing the whole situation. but the complexity of the understanding of om the very reality of zero the absolute nothingness from veda is creative as well as a destructive force that missing of the true understanding of those those om those vacuum those absolute zero Uh, is an interesting metaphor in which the story has been depicted in that section the third section temple talks about rebirth recycle of life it happens in rainy season and uh, the parts of the novel uh, here concentrates on the themes of reconciliation and rebirth in different forms the primary events that it depicts is the hindu festival celebrating the birth or rebirth of krishna and feelings return to india in the second section but it focuses the prime theme how creativity is there everywhere now the action of the two sections of this book takes place in the town of chandrapur and at the marabar caves located outside the town which is modeled after Uh, in bihar samare caves the section third is going towards rural india a passage to india is indeed a great work which has encompassed several significant topics that had some uh, bearings upon the society during the british rule in india but foster's greatness and here the greatest contribution in fact lies in the fact that in this novel he has raised the problem of human relationship and has discussed the pros and cons of the same at the great length he has stated how the two different cultures even within the cultures hindu and muslim is living so here the amalgamation of christian hindu and Uh, and muslim cultures is the major focus the major fault or lacuna of the british empire was that uh, the polished and highly tutored dignitaries who were empowered by the british imperialist government to rule over the indians failed to realize the value of human relationship in fact they have not penetrated deep into understanding the very indianness but foster has again and again sought to pinpoint this axiomatic truth that of a need for a solid human relationship the most essential need at the time of british india or understanding 
one 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 can be a possible ruler a truest ruler if he understand his natives that the colonial perspective but here from a british perspective one should understand the very indianness the greatness of india should be understood first are whole heartedly believe that uh, that in the value of uh, personal relationship the holiness of the hearts affection he says but he did not at all subscribe to the view afford by feeling that the world is a globe of man who are trying to reach one another and can best do so with the help of budoi by his culture and intelligence he had an altogether different idea about the personal relationship according to foster all others attempts at building up personal relationship during the british rule were failed by the lack of true understanding and philosophy the ambit of relations stuck in narrowness of the heart is the very problem in the british raj foster regarded this as a great problem which shook the very foundation of anglo indian relationship the english people suffered from a sense of superiority and they believed that the native indians would not be brought into the level of friendship and equal treatment they could not be as far with the british people that's the fault line one cannot have a true friendship unless one can have the true understanding value of the other counterpart the sense of vanity and the consequent lack of understanding created a permanent drive between the indians and the english people no amount of culture of or intelligence or good gesture could bridge this learning gap so foster did tenaciously cling to the view that a healthy human relationship did not prevail opting to its peculiar tendency to crumble down and collapse in the incipient section of the novel foster has very clearly shown the possibility of the formation of a personal relationship for example mrs moore and ajiz establish a secret understanding of the heart in the solitude of the mosque both of them escape from the trouble lost chandrapo and uh take refuge in the quiet atmosphere of the mosque having been treated most contemptuously by the british authorities ajiz had come to the mosque after seeking the dust of anglo india of his feet mrs moore also has uh, has been terribly bored by the monotony of the club life and she has come to the mosque which is which is completely immune from the toil and turmoil fever and fret of chandrapura his purpose is to seek some penak for her mind unlike her other counterparts in the novel mrs moore is a lady of cultured mind and broad heart she has warmth of sympathy for the indians for the indian people as well as for the indian cultures Ajij has very justly eulogized Mrs. Moore by saying that she is almost oriental in her attitude of sympathy towards the Indians. She gives a patient sharing to Ajij's complaints against the autocracy of the British Raj and the British governmental policies. Similarly, Fielding and Ajij are also found to dispel the very gloom of racial disparity they are actuated by mental philo feelings goodwill and spontaneity of heart fielding has a great personality a genial personality and he possesses tolerance and a liberal attitude ajit in perfect affinity with fielding is highly sensitive and impulsive by the nature 
of course they have had a lot of minor differences on many matters of common interest but uh, all these minor and insignificant differences are dissolved by their reciprocal understanding and friendship so that is the focal point that we find in Fielding's A Passage to India. Koster considered friendship to be one of the most important thing in life. He once remarked con controversially that if he were faced with the choice of betraying his country or betraying his friends, he would betray his country. A Passage to India explores the nature of friendship in its different forms in its various moods and the word friend occurs frequently throughout the book. So when we first meet Dr. Aziz and his friends Hamidullah and Muhammad Ali, they are discussing whether it is possible for Indians to be friends with the British. Hamidullah who is pleasant and easygoing fondly recalls his friendship with a, a British man, British fellow family uh, long ago. When Dr. Aziz meets Mrs. Moore at the mosque, he feels she is someone with whom he can develop a friendship. He also wants to make friends with Cyril Fielding, whom he regards as a sympathetic fellow. But despite his general impulsiveness, Aziz realizes that a, a single meeting is too short to make a friend. Now again, Aziz has a curious friendship with Professor Godball. He likes a Godball but is unable to understand him. Godball himself has a friendly attitude but he is vogue and distracted. When Fielding tells him that Ajit has been arrested, Godbol seems unconcerned. Instead, he asks Fielding for advice about what name to be given to a school that he is thinking of starting. Still, Fielding acknowledges that all friends, Godbol's, Godbol's all friends trusted him without knowing why. Of all the British characters in this book, Fielding has the greatest gift for friendship. Mrs. Moore feels friendliness for Ajiz when he first meets him. But she loses interest in friendship and in life itself when she loses her faith at Marabar Caves. Among the other British characters, a sense of duty generally takes precedence over friendship. Although he had no known her in England, Rooney is unable to sustain a relationship with Adelaide in India. In their words and accent, British officials such as Rooney, Mr. Tarnot, Mr. Tarton, and Mr. McBride demonstrate what while they may get along with Indians on one level. It is impossible and indeed undesirable to be friends with them. Although a friendship between Aziz and Fielding is found to be in the budding stage, the temperamental differences become a greater barrier. This possibility of a friendship and mutual misunderstanding was totally marred by individual attitudes and values. Aziz is oversensitive and highly imaginative while Fielding is natural and extremely logical. He never yields to any emotional fervor. Ajit is always found to be lost by imagination. He can extend the warmth of friendship which Fielding cannot accept. Thus, in a hearty company, they are found to be ill accord with each other. In a pensive, emotionally charged and reminiscent mood, Ajit shows Fielding the photograph of his deceased friend. But Fielding's response is too cold to generate reciprocity between them. Misunderstanding crops up and they submit themselves to alienation. The balance is disturbed and the bond is broken. 
feeling recoils to the British side and Aziz is seen to establish identification with the Indian nationalism. The book concludes with a conversation between Aziz and Fielding about the possibility of the friendship, the theme that has been the subject of the first conversation. Aziz tells Fielding that they cannot be friends until the English have been driven out of India. Now here Fielding replies that he wants to be friends and that it is also what Aziz wants. The last paragraph however suggests that the political forces at work in India will not yet allow such a friendship. Now what is the barrier be in, 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 in between this friendship? The political situations in India. Foster has explicitly shown in this novel that the human relationship is likely to collapse if the intrinsic quality of the imagination, feelings and understanding is absent. I have told you in earlier section of my discussion. His relationship should not have an ephemeral effect. It must be lasting and permanent. The conversation between Fielding and Adila sufficiently reveals the fact that limitation in respect of imagination, emotional, still and logical or rational attitude in all matters produces a kind of crippling effect on the heart. It becomes impossible to build a permanent, lasting and warm human relationship by overcoming the racial disparities and the political tension and, and transcending the bounds of national sentiments that we find therein. The rationality and the lack of understanding germinate a narrowness of the heart and myopia. Foster has given ample illustrations in, in this novel. Now, while you are going to read this particular novel, you have to understand by section the different characters and how they have related to each other and how their definition of the friendship occurs and how they reject or accept that friendship and how they overcome those hurdles by becoming friend or what are the situations that crumble their friendship. So with that notion that you should further proceed to this kind of understanding, this kind of reading of your novel, I say goodbye to this lecture. If you like this lecture, you can like, share and comment here and obviously subscribe to my channel so that I can prompt other video lectures for you. Thank you. Bye bye.